Right, we're going to look at some angle gears from an FS460 scrub cutter. That's a big steel, and you can fit a whole variety of different tools to these. Everything from a maxi blade for cutting down small trees, through to a strimmer head. Very useful, very robust. FS460 has been running for about 10 years, and they've recently been replaced by the FS461, which has a redesigned angle gear which has incorporated in it here, see this boss, a port which you can remove and then inject grease into the head to make the angle gears last a bit longer. These particular ones don't have that, they're greased and sealed for life in the factory or the bearing factory where the bearings come from because you can replace the bearings. I'll show you basically how to take these apart. This one I've started to dismantle and have removed this grub screw here, which looks like this. And you need all these Allen keys. This is an M3. And you need to remove these which hold this hold this bearing guard on. This is a new camera, which isn't as easy to use as a GoPro, but hopefully we'll get better results. Apologies for the wind noise. Both of these need a rebuild because this one, you hear that? It's very noisy indeed. This has already been rebuilt once in January 2023. And then again in October 2023. It's also been helicoiled here. These three bolts, same on the FS461, are the ones that hold the guards on. Usually steel guards have these three screws, which are little M5s. This one you can helicoil because it's just about got enough meat in it. But these ones here, when they strip, and they do strip, like this one here, Hopefully you can see there's no thread in that. There is thread in that, for comparison. Can't be helicoiled because there's not enough meat inside. You can also see that grease escapes from the bearings here. So once grease escapes, of course there's no lubrication to the angle gears, which we'll see in a minute. So they seize up. How to get these out, basically need Nice big block of wood. You'll see why in a minute. Don't use anything hard like a top of a vise because you'll burr this over. So that comes out like that. And see the, uh, the taper on the end? You need to get that nice and warm. so the gas doesn't escape and then that's basically all that holds things together that grub screw retains this assembly which is oh it's hot it's a good fit inside the main tube and you might be able to see all the gubbins inside it there and then this basically uh, knocks out like that. They don't normally come out as easy as that. And they basically sit together like 
that and that's your angle gear so it's in there like that here you can see that these gears are probably serviceable you can see where here by my thumb and the fact that it's lost most of its grease there's a bit on here Sometimes if this bearing starts to uh, lose its grease, and this one seems to be okay, it'll spin in its housing. And if you put a loose bearing in here, then the base, basically the grease escapes alongside the sides of the bearing. So that's not worth doing. Putting it in with Loctite doesn't work, because Loctite or stud lock or bearing lock decomposes with heat and these tend to get rather worked hard and then get very hot. What I'll do now is take this one apart and we'll have a look inside that one. Talk to you in a minute. Right, we stripped that and allowed it a little bit of time to cool. And basically you can see, because it's all still covered in cack, I haven't cleaned this up because I think it's had its chips. You can see where I heated it this is where the bearing sits. The grub screw goes in here and retains the bearings. It spans faster than the steel and then you can knock the thing out. You can see that this is completely blue and all the grease is completely solid. And if I tip it up you can see that the bearing cage has completely gone. Well, this bit of it it's made of plastic is still there. The other half is completely gone and basically melted or even burnt. So this blue coloration tells you that this has been at least at 550 degrees Fahrenheit which is the temperature at which polished steel oxidizes to produce this color. There's a whole range of different colors produced at different temperatures which can assist you in, what's the word, tempering steel. So a brown colour, which you see here, see your thumbnail, on this shaft, is a lower temperature than this. I can't remember the temperature of that. And a light straw, which you can see here, is a lower temperature again. So this whole thing has been stinking hot. So this, it's dead Jim, dead Jim dead. And there should be one of these on there, which is a circuit. See it there with its two little ears? And that has also vanished. Gone away, not there, don't know where it's gone. And these bearings as well have been extremely hot. And this one here is seized, the one that's been hottest, so the grease in there is burnt as well. So this whole assembly is knackered. This is potentially good, it needs to be cleaned up, and if you go to the bother of building one of those, you need four bearings, that one, that one, and that one, and there are three types. This one's a 6202, which is commonplace, you can buy that any bearing supplies. See there, 6202. Two RS, two rubber seals, one on this side, one on this side. And you've got this spacer here, and that's critical to get the meshing right on the gears. There's no adjustment, no shimming, all these are of the same thickness. They just rely purely on manufacturing tolerances. This bearing here, which I can't see the number on it, I think it's a 6000. Two of these 6001s, which are steel shielded. There's a shield on the outside and the inside of each one. So basically, the uh, grease, as you can see here, can come out of those shields. And you also, when you put it together, you put grease on the meshing surfaces of the angle gears, which are these. They don't seem to be pairs. The manufacturing tolerances are good enough, you can chop and change these, although I like to try and keep them as pairs. Here you can see in this box here, 
it's full of usable pairs of angle gears and you can see in here this has gone a little bit uh, tarnished in use but this bearing will be changed and that's what it should look like with the bearing race or cage in there and equally spaced bearings you can just see them inside now that is in good condition but this one is faulty because this bearing here is loose on its shaft and that will give you play and here you can see a rubber seal removed and this one has a steel cage which is more robust than the plastic cage so this one's been stripped and you can see here this one has also been rebuilt in 2021 November so that's gone two years it's now 2024 July since rebuild and what we need to do now is clean this up measure this measure the bearing surface in there as well to make sure that there's good interference fit when you fit new bearings otherwise it's no good at all this one's got good threads here and here and this one here has been helicoiled and is still in good condition so this one's possibly worth rebuilding but if you rebuild an angle gear which has a known fault such as a bad fit here so the bearing moves in and out or a duff thread in either one of these these can't be helicoid remember then it's not worth the candle power so FS460 angle gears they can be rebuilt, but you need to know the trick, which I've just shown you, to rebuild them. When you put them back together, it's best to heat this up before pushing this back in so that you don't knock the bearings in, especially this one, which is a good fit, and damage the bearing race. Right, I hope that's good. Oh, and you can tell by this, a number of these in here, there's about a dozen sets, that this firm, over the 10 years I've been working for them, goes through a lot of these. These are about 136 quid a pop. The modern replacements, the FS461, 180 quid a pop. They do a lot of hard work.